All right, chat, we are doing, we are doing a Hunter competitive tier list. Okay. Spicy Hunter competitive tier list. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, S is top tier. D is don't ever play it. Now, I don't know how to filter out these gods, so we're just going to go, you know, down each row. And then we'll just pick out the gods, all right? So first up is AMC. Now, AMC was a very popular pick at Worlds, right? But he was very popular in mid, okay? The reason why he was better in mid than he was in ADC is because the lane is shorter in mid. So it's harder for AMC to gank. Also, AMC likes to fight a lot, and there's a lot of fighting around mid, the mid 3v3. And he has insane follow-up with his stinger. But all that being said, he would be S tier if he was in mid. But because he's in dual lane, you can't really fight as much in dual lane because you're an easy target uh, for ganks and an easy target in those skirmishes. Therefore, he's A tier. Okay? The reason being is that he's easily ganked. You can't really play up as AMC. <coughs> but overall, the god is extremely powerful. If you play him in mid, he's S tier. Best god. Best god in mid. Okay, but dual lane, he's only A for the, for the reasons I just said. All right, on her. On her is next. On her is going to be B tier. Now, the, the problem with on her is that he's his poke is, like, it, he's too close range. He doesn't have any long range poke. His two is about the, the range of an auto attack. So what happens is, is that other... Uh, hunters, they can clear and poke him from a safer range, and they can stay away from his uh, all-in. Honor is really his... What makes him strong is that he has really good 100 to 0 capabilities with his alt and his 2. But he has weak poke, and he needs to use his 2 to clear. So once he uses his 2 to clear, it's not so easy for him to just go all-in somebody. Right? So, an experienced hunter, when you play against Honor, all you want to do is stay out of his uh, jump range so you don't get all in and then try to clear or poke him from range because that is his weakness. He does not have the good range. Um, not to mention in team fights late game, he falls off tremendously because his two and his alt, they don't do too much damage to tanks when they go on you. And also another uh, item that destroys him, especially in competitive is Magi's. Like if, if a jungler goes Magi's and they blink on you, 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 just, you just get farmed because your main... Your main defense when someone blinks on you is your two to push them back. But with Magi's, they just, you know, they continue to walk at you and do their damage uninterrupted. So you have to actually turn around 180 and jump away, which is really, really bad in the late game when everyone does, you know, one shot type damage. That's why he's B tier, not A. Okay, next up, Apollo. Ooh, Apollo. Apollo is one of my favorites. I'll admit, I'm biased. Apollo is one of my favorite gods. I think he's pretty good in Season 9 because the meta pen build for Apollo, or I mean for Hunters in general, is Silver Branch, and he can he can get a lot of stacks easily without even trying. So the meta build fits him really well. And he's actually really strong in lane, really strong in teamfights. I'm tempted to put him S tier. <sighs> mm. Mm, I think I'm just going to put him S. I'm going to put him S. So... The meta build right now, as you guys know, if you've watched my streams or even other uh, Hunter streams, is the meta pen item is Silver Branch. Now that it's been buffed to 20% pen, it is the meta uh, pen item. And Apollo can get easily, like, four items in, can get 49 stacks, 50 stacks with his passive. Um, can even go higher than that if you start stacking attack speed, right? Getting Death Temper instead of Embrace. You can get a lot of stacks. Very powerful. He's super powerful in lane. He has one of the highest base auto attack damages from level one on. Uh, his audacity is insane. You can get a lot of kills early game with him. You know, clearing the way first, dashing in with your audacity and just 100 to zeroing somebody with your autos. Uh, so he's super powerful right now. His only, his weak spots is that, again, his range, he's kind of like on her in that sense that he doesn't have a long range poke. So good ADCs are a good play style against Apollos is just kite him back, backpedal against him. Use your ranged abilities to poke him out. Just the same way you play against Honor. Um, there's a way to play around him. His alt late game can be very useless. 
because everyone like one shots you like you can't really split push late game where it's not that easy because if a jungler goes on you he actually one shots you and you can't alt out because it takes like two seconds uh to get out of there so it's pretty tough to split push with apollo um another item that farms apollo he's very similar to honor like another item that farms apollo is magi's uh magi's farms him hard because again his his response to a blink in is mez and if he can't mez he has the 180 turn and dash which is really rough so magi is really good against him as well however he's extremely powerful right now with the current meta build he's also really strong in lane you can do a lot of uh cheesy split pushing with uh i forget it was one of the bumbus things that like heal you when you kill objectives something like that but overall i think he's very strong right now I did mention his weaknesses just so you guys know how to play against him because he's a very popular pick right now. And then next up, Artemis. Okay. We're going to put Artemis in B. So I personally think that Artemis is a very strong character when she can get online. But the problem now is, chat, is that the dual lane has five contestable camps, okay? It has the double alpha, the double flower minions, and it has the Draugr harpies. There used to be a Draugr there. There's no longer a Draugr. There's harpies. So lane clear has become so important in this meta currently, and you can easily get snowballed on in the dual lane right now. And that really plays into Artemis' weaknesses. If Artemis can get, you know two three four items she can be powerful but the early game is a big problem for her she has weak clear so the enemy <clears throat> the enemy is allowed to get her uh her flower minion her alpha minion and they can get the Draugr harpies on cooldown and just build up a lead on artemis uh, against artemis that's insurmountable so right now she just doesn't have the clear she takes a little too long to get online with the way the uh, map is played and another thing is that mages do immense damage right now with the double flat pen build and she's not a, a god that can avoid damage it's hard for her to avoid damage so once you get in there you, you know you kind of like 100 you kind of like all in so with all those things being said it's just not her meta right now she doesn't need any buffs or anything like that it's just not her meta right now it's a little too snowballing in dual lane pressure is king over there right now clear pressure is king over there right now um and there's a lot of damage from mages long range damage that she can't avoid so right now it's just not her meta if things change she can easily be an a, a god or even an s god if, if if the meta changes so she doesn't need any buffs but just right now the way the way things currently are the way things are currently developing she's b all right next up we got kernanos kernanos is my favorite god in season nine he they buffed his two ability which is his long range root where uh, if you hit the root, it also cripples now. And why is that so powerful for Kernos? Is that before Kernos would root somebody and the person that got rooted would just jump away or dash away and Kernos had no follow-up off his root. Now, if you root someone and you ult instantly, you can hit them with the ult. So that's <clears throat> big follow-up damage. Or you can easily auto and then guarantee your dash to hit, which is big burst damage. So they can auto dash, d cancel the dash auto again. And that's already... 500 plus damage early game and so that's why the buff giving him a cripple on the two is so powerful and why you see kernanos kind of like being picked all the time now however he has big weaknesses he has a short range dash which means he's very easily dove in the late game he has no cc immune alt and <clears throat> if you get behind on kernanos it's so easy to kill him in team fights or gank him or um etc etc so he's very weak in the team fights. It's hard for him to do anything in the team fights, especially if he's behind. Uh, it's easy for, to gank him. So that's why he's not S. But because of how powerful he is right now with the cripple, he's A tier. All right, next up, next up. My girl Cardi B. Kerbidus. Kerbidus. Kerbidus is one of, <coughs> one of my favorite gods in Season 8. She, I think, at first glance, she was weak, and then they buffed her. And then her kit was kind of, it kind of just looked, you know, a little underwhelming, like nothing too fancy from her kit. But once people got used to it, they realized how strong Kerbidus is. So Kerbidus kind of has it all. I don't think she really has any weaknesses other than her range, right? She kind of has short range abilities or not short range ability, auto attack range abilities, which is not even that bad. But um, she has insane clear. 
She has insane pressure in the lane because her two is a large AoE that slows and it can hit the whole wave and the enemy gods at the same time. That is so powerful. And her three is an insane escape ability and also an insane all-in ability and an ability uh, juker. And also a strong immunity. So if you get Sir Cat ulted or Nua ulted, you could just three, Kerbit is three, and then immune all that damage. So her kit is actually insanely powerful. And then she can also use her ult to speed up a little bit and get out of there or follow up off CC. It's actually a really powerful alt if you use it well. Uh, she kind of just, like I said, the only weakness is her range and lane, but that doesn't even matter because she just has so much clear. Basically, the way you want to play her in lane is you want to use your one, clear the wave. If they start trying to contest you, then you use your two, finish clearing the wave with your two, and you attack them at the same time. And you outclear them, and you poke them, and you slow them, and you can start damaging them as well. She is the here. She is literally a perfect hunter right now. I think she's uh, one of the top picks for sure. I would put her. I would probably put her top three. Just off the bat, she's extremely powerful. Uh, next up is Chernobog. Chernobog is also a god that received a buff in season nine. They buffed his passive damage, which is actually quite a bit uh, of damage, and they made his one uh, projectile go out faster, which is a big buff as well. Chernobog's always been a strong god. His problem was the early game, getting out of the early game without getting bullied. Um. He has an, an exceptional kit. He's also a god like Apollo who benefits from the new meta build where you go Silver Branch. He can get his his steroids are very powerful, gives him a lot of attack speed. He can get a lot of stacks. Um, with the passive buff to the damage, it allows him to trade more effectively against other gods. And of course, his ultimate is insane and his three is insane. Um, but he does have a kind of a weak a weaker laning phase than Apollo. And uh, because of that, he'll be going to A. Although, if there was like an A+, plus, I'd put him A+. Plus. Can I add it? Hold on. Can I add? Let me add one. Ooh! What did I just do? Can I add a, a thing? Chat! Chat! Can I add? The templates, I don't know. Oh, add row above. So easy. It's... Oops. 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 Okay, here we go. This is going to be A+. plus. Okay. I'm just adding this because I need it. The reason why he's better than... Kernanos and AMC is because of his survivability. His three is insane. Um, you can immune Sirket damage with it. You can immune Nua damage with his three. Uh, you can also sit in the wall for a good like two or three seconds. I forget the timer. Um, so he's a very powerful god. But again, he's just slightly weaker than Apollo right now because of his laning phase is a bit weaker. And he can lose pressure pretty easily. But overall, he's a very powerful god if you can get that first item online. Okay, next up. Who do we have? Chiron. Ooh, Chiron. Chiron? Mm. I think he's a sleeper pick. I think he's... First off, his kit is insane, okay? He, ha he has an AoE ability in his one that can hit the whole wave without stacking it up. It cleanses, does a lot of damage, and it puts a mark on the enemy for his two. His three is now... What is it? Knock up immune, which is makes it a great escape. And his ultimate is probably like top five alts in the game. Probably. Top five damage alts in the game, I should say. It does so much damage. You can use it from such far range. But the problem is that he he thrives. He thrives with the power pen build, right? He doesn't really thrive with an auto attack build. So that's why you see him more in mid. Usually the mid hunters, you build them more ability based uh, because you know they're fighting earlier, et cetera, et cetera. So if he was a mid god, I would put him S, but because he's not and his build is weaker in the laning phase, um, and also it's a little bit weaker than the auto attack builds against tanks, he's just gonna be A. But he's still powerful in lane. He can still snowball. He can still do all those things. 
But like I said, if he was if he was uh, <clears throat> in mid, he'd be S. But as a hunter, he's A. Okay. Next up is Cupid. Cupid. <laughs> I hate this god. I might be a little biased, but I think this god sucks. Okay, so Cupid has one of the lowest uh, basic attack or fizz power scaling in the game out of all hunters. He has one of the lowest starting physical powers, uh, physical power values as a hunter. So he's very weak early. He can't really trade anybody early. He needs maybe one or two items to even start being competitive in the lane. He has no CC immunity. He has a dash that's easily followed. Um, he loses lane very easily. He loses trades very easily. However, in the late game, in the late game, Cupid does synergize very well with the meta build. Again, he can get silver branch stacks, which is very good. He has healing for the team. He has a lot of utility with his ultimate. Uh, his heart bomb is a very strong follow-up ability because it slows into a stun. However, like I said, his laning phase is very weak. And as I stated before, with the problems with Artemis, is that the dual lane is very snowbally. You remember, you have five contestable camps that it makes it harder for Cupid to really contest the lane. He's definitely not as weak as Honor and Artemis. So we're gonna make a new. We're gonna make these uh, new rows as we need them. Okay. So he's not quite as weak as. These two gods, but he's also not as strong as Karnanos and AMC. So he will be... We'll, we'll name this B+. Plus. Put this green, I guess. It'll be B+. Plus. So he does synergize well with the... The meta build, and... <clears throat> he has really good utility. But again, his early game is really, really weak. And he has heals. Alright, next up, next up, next up. Donza. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to delete D tier, right? D tier? We don't need this. We don't need D tier. Okay. My boy Donza <laughs> is trash. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Donza. The problem with Donza is that he needs. He might be B. I don't know. Let me, let me talk this through and then we can decide if he's C or B. So the problem with Donza is that <clears throat> there's a lot of things. Holy crap. Uh, is that he needs to be babysat at all times. Okay. He, he's one of the easiest hunters to gank. One of the easiest hunters to kill. His one and two are not confirmable on their own. Anyone that has eyeballs can juke a freehand one from Donza if it's auto attack ranged. And they can juke the Donza two. Okay. So that means he has to get up close and personal to even, like, hit his abilities. Okay, that's one. The best part about Donza's kit is definitely his three. His three makes him almost unboxable, gives him a fatalis effect, and also reduces basic attack damage coming at him. So his three is definitely powerful. But all you have to do against Donza is not fight him, and then just wait for your supporter jungler to come over and kill him. He's so easy to kill. His ult's so easy to block. In the late game team fights, it's hard for him to really do anything. His team has to be ahead. He has to be able to feel safe in these fights to even walk up and do anything. Um, he does have good follow-up in his two. His two is very good follow-up. Um, but like I said, he has to play on a team that is snowballing. And they need to snowball with him. He's very good at fighting with his team. But like I said, he's easy to kill. He's easy to go on. He's kind of just like a worse AMC in every way. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe he's not C. Because he can fight. He can fight, though. He can fight. His team just has to play with you 24-7, right? It's just got to be play with Donza 24-7. Never leave him alone. We'll, no, we'll put him, no, we'll put him B. Because I think some other gods are C, actually. Because he can actually fight and do damage. We'll, we'll put him B. We'll put him B. Maybe a B minus, but I'm not going to add a B minus just for that. He's he's at these levels. He's he's just like on her in the sense that he can fight, but he's bad everywhere else. Okay. Next up is my girl Freya. Okay, we're doing mage ADCs too, by the way. So next up is Freya. Oh, did I skip Kronos? Okay, we'll do Kronos. 
so mage adcs are just generally better this year than they were last year which is kind of crazy because last year they were op um the thing about chronos though is his laning phase is weak and that's why you don't really see him being played over the other magical adcs right his overall kit is strong he can be strong in the late game but there's a lot of things that work against him okay here we go one he needs a lot of mana to, to to sustain in lane and even to fight in lane. So he runs through a lot of mana issues early game. Um, it's hard for him to clear the wave early as well, which means he'll get snowballed in lane, just like the other gods I mentioned in B tier. If you can get out of the laning phase, he has a really strong mid game. And then in the late game, he's actually very weak in a competitive setting when you have to group up for fire because he just gets deleted okay it's so hard to use chronosol in the late game when everything one shots and now with the buff to flat pen and and long range mages like thoth or raw snipe or any, literally any other mage that builds flat pen they will one shot the chrono so it is so hard for him to walk up and like you know use his auto attacks use his one uses three because it's all decently close range it's auto attack range and so it's hard to get an effective alt off because once you start taking damage you're like oh shit i got an alt you're just gonna get a, you're gonna get exploded um, so he has a weak early game, decent mid game. He can be powerful in the late game, maybe if you split push and stuff, but this is a competitive tier list. It's not a ranked tier list. So, uh, we're going to have to put him. Mm, B plus or B. Fuck. I mean, if you do get a good alt off, it could be good, but it's just so difficult. What do you guys think after I after my I can't I can't decide. I think I'm gonna put him B. No, I think I'm gonna put him B. Like I say, he just can't play the game in the late game. This is a competitive setting, okay? This is not like I'm ranked split pushing all game. Alright. I'm gonna put him B. I might have to put Artemis as B plus. No kissy. I'm going to put Armas B+, plus actually, because <clears throat> she's insane with the meta build. These gods are not insane with the meta build, so that sets her apart. She's going B+. Plus. Okay. Next up is Freya. Okay. So Freya is an extremely powerful god once you get out of the laning phase. Her banish is one of the best setup abilities in the game by far. It's on a decently low cooldown. I think it's like 12 seconds, max rank. It literally it doesn't knock them up but it it banishes them which is a new form of cc or like its own form of cc and then as they come down they can get hit as they're coming down while they can't do anything about it so it is probably the best setup in the game i would say um extremely powerful her ultimate is very op because as soon as you press it you're immune so you can easily use it to react to big ultimates like you hear a thought thought you press four as soon as you press four you're immune so it could be last second and it doesn't matter you're going to be immune so it's very strong against these burst alts 64 months in the z squad going strong yo solace thank you so much it's very strong against those kind of burst alts uh just to immune damage and the and and, and her alt itself can literally one shot in the late game and the fact that there's now the glyph item nimble rod which is an uh, an upgrade from regular rod to hoodie it's called a glyph item nimble rod she doesn't need to go four rings in a rod anymore she can go three rings in a rod and that hyphens which makes her really good. She doesn't even need to go Typhon. She can go three rings, Rod, and uh, Spear of the Magus. And you can even put the Spear of the Magus earlier on into the build. So she's so powerful right now. I think she's really, really strong. However, she has a big weakness. And that weakness is her laning phase. She can only clear the wave for as long as her two is up, which is so easily abusable. Any good support player will hear Freya's too, and they'll just walk in front of her, eat a couple of shots, then try to juke her a little bit, and then just walk away. And then after that, the wave's already cleared in their favor, and Freya used her too. She has to wait another five seconds by the time it's up again. So her laning phase is so weak. And like I said, this meta right now is very snowball-y. It's very clear heavy. There's those five contestable camps, then Freya can get snowballed on. However, if you do just, you know, you say, okay, I'm going to get out of this laning phase one level down, two levels down. And then after that, you're going to play the game. If you do that, she can be very strong uh, as long as, you know, your whole team is okay with you kind of like losing your purple, losing whatever, and being two levels down. Freya, all she needs to be powerful is two items. If you can farm those two items without falling too far behind, she's probably one of the best gods in the game.
So with that being said, we're going to put her eight. Because like I said, she, she just gets out pressure too hard. If she can get out of the laning phase, S. But the laning phase is a really big part of the game and a really big part of the meta right now. And it's very snowbally. It's even more snowbally than last year. So we're going to put her A. Easily S once she's out of the laning phase. A as an overall god pick. Does Anemian fuck Freya though? Yeah, but it's three uh three block stacks. Anyone can get those block stacks. It doesn't just have to be Freya. And you're literally going to have 2.5 attack speed with Freya. So it'll just take one second to get them off. And you can also coordinate with your team. When you have a Freya, you just tell your team to play with you, right? All you can do is protect the Freya. So you can have your mid or your support hit the tank too and get their block stacks. It's not, it's not that difficult. Remember, this is a competitive setting. This is not just like ranked. You can have coordination and get those block stacks taken care of easily. Okay, next up is Hachiman. Okay, Hachiman is my boy, okay? He is my favorite god of all time, my favorite hunter. His three ability is my favorite ability in the game. However, however, he, it, he, how can I explain this? He has a worse trade than these gods up here. Okay, maybe not Freya, but he has a worse trade than these gods up here. He doesn't do as much damage as they do. Um, which is a problem in the laning phase when it's really important. Um, he gets out cleared by those A tier gods as well. But he has a lot of things going for him, okay? He has really good 1v1. He has a very good team fight steroid with his two. He has really good survivability with his ultimate. He has really good siege and siege defense with his one because it's a longer range auto. But his laning phase is very weak right now compared to these other gods. And I don't think he's quite as powerful as those A gods, even though he's my favorite god right now. Ah, this would be like an A minus, bro. He's not quite as weak as Artemis Cupid, but he's not quite as strong as AMC Kuranos, Chiron. I'm gonna have to put an A minus chat. I don't know. He he's stronger than these gods, but weaker than the A gods. You, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna put an A minus. We'll just put him B plus. We'll just put him B plus. It hurts me, but he's just weaker right now. True, you know what we can do? We can. Can I move this here? Yeah. We'll do that. Hachi's Hachi's a very high B plus. Okay. He's just weak. He's just a little bit weaker than these gods right now. It pains me to say because I love the god. He's just slightly weaker than these A gods, but slightly stronger than these B plus gods. Okay, next up is my boy, Heimdall. My boy, Heim. Mm. Love this god. So, uh, Heim has great clear, great 1v1, great zoning, great defense against blinks, a great ultimate, super safe. He has it all, okay? He's like Kerbidus. He has it all. Except he's be a little slightly better than Kerbidus in a sense that he has longer range than Kerbidus. So he's just the whole package. This is like, he's literally Giga Chad. The Giga Chad in the dual lane. Okay? Um, if you get good with his portals, the sky's the limit with this guy. You can portal aggressively for 1v1s. You can portal uh, to safety to avoid abilities, to avoid merc alts, or you know anything. Like he, he has such a high skill cap that you could do so much with this god. And I don't think it really... I'm not even sure if anyone's feel uh, like has hit his full potential because it's just, there's just so many crack things you could do with him. Um, his, you start with his Bifrost level one and you always put a Bifrost in the lane or in purple and you get to lane first, which always gives him pressure first. And in this meta where you are fighting over five different 
contestable camps in dual lane pressures everything and Haim gets that pressure and he, he he can he can hold his own in the lane no one really beats him 1v1 i mean some gods can beat him 1v1 but it doesn't really matter because he has the pressure in the lane so he is yes he's amazing in team fights hard to kill i mean i don't know what to say about him he's just a god he's he's a godly god he's a godly god okay next up oh oh ye oh ye so who ye the way i describe who ye is that he's the king of 1v1s okay he can 1v1 any other hunter uh and it's almost not even close right he's always been able to do this since he was released he's he has the best 1v1 because his his damage and his cc they all follow up into the next next one of his abilities right you use your two you jump on them it knocks them up that leads into a nice auto into one cancel which also leads into the stun and then you know you can alter you just keep autoing by then they're already dead it doesn't even matter so his abilities just flow like water okay but he has extremely bad weaknesses okay his weaknesses are he has no cc immunity in the alt his one is not good wave clear compared to other hunters line abilities other hunters line abilities or wave clear abilities are stronger than his they clear faster than he does okay he's easily ganked he's also very susceptible to the damage agus and the and and the dam and the and the thorns because as soon as a tank blinks on him and if he alts it's so easy for them to pop the agus pop the thorns and he cannot avoid that damage also who he's main defense ability against blinks is his jump okay because he can't just stun them because he has to mark them first to stun them right so when like a humbots blinks on you you are forced to jump and then once your jump is down the other guy blinks on you and you're just dead okay so he's very weak survivability wise especially in the team fights the only thing he's got going for him really is good jungle clear and really good 1v1 he also synergizes very well with you know the crusher aussie build um but like I said, he's very weak in the team fights. He's kind of just weak outside of laning phase. Especially if he's not ahead. Just an easy target. So we'll probably put him. I'm leaning towards B plus or A. <laughs> Mm, brah. He's really just kind of average. I would consider him kind of equal to Hachiman on the tier list. I think we're going to put him B+. Plus. He's not quite as good as these other gods here. Especially in the team fight. His team fight is so weak. He can't survive in the team fights compared to these other gods. I think he's kind of just equal with Hachiman, the double H gods. Yeah, he is on the lower end of attack speed scaling. Okay, next up. We have Izanami. Everyone's favorite god, Izanami. Izanami's a rank stopper. She's seen a lot of competitive play. She is actually pretty good right now because, like I said, it's very snowballing meta right now, so clear is king. However, she has the same weaknesses as Hu Yi. She has really bad, um, really bad responses to blinks, really rough team fight, and if she gets behind, she's so easy to kill. I mean, you guys saw at Worlds... When Izanami gets behind, she's just free fodder for the jungler, okay? Um, however, she should not be getting behind because she absolutely slaps in lane. She has one of the best laning phases in the game, if not the best. <clears throat> but like I said, if she does get behind, if that one gank comes and she gets behind, she's useless. But she's so good in this meta. She synergizes very well with the meta build. So she is going to go A+. Plus. She's not she's not quite the whole package as these gods up top. She has some glaring weaknesses, but her strengths are pretty overwhelming. 
to uh, forego those weaknesses. And she's really she's really strong with the way the current meta is being played in the dual lane. So we'll put her S A plus. Right? You guys think that's fair? I think that's fair. Okay, next up, Jingwei. Jingwei is also one of my favorite gods. However, <laughs> she kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, uh, she can be good. She can be good. She's one of the safest hunters in the game. She's one of the best farmers in the game because of her passive. But the thing is, is that these other hunters up here, they do so much damage that they can just out trade the Jingwei so easily and force her to back constantly and take her farm constantly and snowball on her so easily. She cannot clear. Um, she not, cannot clear by herself. She needs to. It's so hard for her to get out of the early laning phase. If you can get out of the early laning phase with Jingwei, she can be very powerful. But it's so rare now, especially if you're playing, like I said, this is a competitive tier list. You're playing against other good players. They're going to take advantage of your low clear. They're going to get your first alpha. They're going to get your first, um, the first Draugr Harvest. They're going to get the first flower minion. And you're going to be playing from behind as Jingwei, and you're just going to get bullied. So in this meta, she's rather, rather weak. Even though overall the god can be strong, She can be strong if she just farms. I don't think she's as weak as Donza. We'll put her there. She's weak in this meta. Okay. You know, it was my, you know, I like her. You know, I like her as a god, right? I was, my bias was kind of kind of like, well, B plus, but she's not as good as Hachi Hui, no way. Or even Artemis, no way. Okay, next up, Medusa. Ooh, my girl Medusa. Okay, this god slaps, okay? One of her weaknesses that I said way back in the day, I always say is that her dash can get caught, but it don't matter, son, because she just kills everything in front of her, okay? She's literally a machine gun with her one. Her one one-shots everybody. Her laning phase is incredible. Her skirmishes are incredible. Her 1v1 is incredible. She does almost too much damage okay it's so hard to deal with medusa she also especially in last year like you know when there's people picking e set support or like um morgan morgan lefay or morgan she's so good into that because her all you cannot miss her alt on those high priority targets and it's another reason why she's so powerful she also has anti-heal in her two now instead of her three which is extremely strong in the laning phase especially against meditation that's been meta for a while now Everything about her is god tier. The only thing that kind of is rough is her survivability in the late game team fights. Um, but as long as you can try to play around that, everything else is S tier. And my girl's going S tier. Okay, she's so fucking good. Fudging good. I'm not supposed to curse when this goes on YouTube. You have to edit that out. <coughs> Editor. <clears throat> she is so effing good. One of my favorite gods right now. Can't say enough good things about her. Uh, okay, next up. Next up, Neith. Okay. Neith is a very niche god, and she also has a niche playstyle right now. She doesn't do well with the auto attack build of, of uh, you know, Chin Size into crit or, you know, Chin Size into Obo. Doesn't really do well into that. Other gods out damage her by a mile. Um, however, there is a special build with her that's very powerful. Where you go mannequins that later on at level 20 you upgrade to hidden blade and then you go you stack pen and power which is basically like transcendence jotun's crusher heart seeker titans as a very like build off the top of my head and she literally one shots her alt one shots carries in the game it's a literally a game winning ultimate in a team fight so she has a lot of potential it's a very gimmicky style very gimmicky build but if you get away with it it's good her landing phase is decent because mannequins allows her to trade out other hunters even though she doesn't have attack speed steroid her two is one of the best boxing abilities in the game as it steals attack speed from the opponent and gives it to her she has sustain things that she's weak against she's weak in the team fights she can't really walk up and do stuff without getting gone on and dying um her alt can be blocked by a tank if they know what they're doing and she's also easily ganked. <clears throat> so she's not quite A. 
we're gonna put her a B plus right here. But yeah, she does have that gimmicky style. Uh, can win you in game on accident with that ult, but uh, you know, overall, she's not that strong of a god. All right. Next up. Next up. Next up. Next up. All are in. Okay, all are in. So, season eight or season? What season are we in right now, chat? We're going into season nine. Okay, season eight. He was S tier. But the problem with all are in this year <clears throat> is that. There is more mage damage in the game, more long range mage damage. One thing that All Arin suffers from is that he's not, he, he's like kind of close range, kind of not, but he suffers from getting poked from far away, especially in the team fights, right? He doesn't have any like juking ability or anything like that, right? It's kind of like you play in his alt and, you know, and then you do your work while you're in his alt, right? But a big counter to that is long range abilities. I remember when I played All Around last year, I hated going against Chiron because he would just alt me in my alt or even alt me while I'm trying to set up my alt and I would just die. So the fact that double flat pen mages are in the meta right now, Agni, Thoth, those gods destroy him in the team fights. It's like not even close. Imagine an Agni just waits for All Around to alt. All Around alt is in the team fight and then Agni just bombs the alt, right? Like, it's so rough for him right now. But he's still overall a very powerful god. But his survivability and the team fights are lacking in this current meta. However, he still has a game-changing alt. He's extremely powerful in the laning phase. He'll, can, he can even outpressure Izanami very easily. Um, Mage ADC builds are stronger than they were before. But like I said, in the team fights, he's a bit lacking. So he's not going to be S, but he'll be A+. Plus. I'm sorry, he's not lagging in team fights. He could just die easy in the team in the team fights. So last season, he would be S. This year, I'm going to put him A+, plus just because there's so much long-range damage in the game that really affects his ability to go pew-pew in his ultimate. Okay? But everywhere else, he's very strong. Next up. Rama. Rama, he's one of my most played gods. I have like top three worshippers on Rama. Um, I actually think he's pretty good right now. Pretty decent. Um, he does well. He does well with the um, <clears throat> the meta build right now as well. He does well with Silver Branch. He's okay in the laning phase. He's, he's kind of just like a worse... Kerbidus, a lot worse Kerbidus, and a worse Izanami. However, I think because the meta build fits him pretty well, he actually scales really well into the late game. His ultimate is very useful. And, you know, he's just, he's kind of just like an auto attack god, and the auto attack build is very powerful right now. But. He is he 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 loses a lot of one, he can lose a lot of one runs, but he can also win. It just depends the matchups. But he does do really well with the meta build right now. I don't know A or B plus. It's so hard for me to tell because he can be an A, but he can also easily be a B plus. Yeah, maybe I do need an A minus. Maybe I do need an A minus. He would be a okay. He would be a minus with Huyi. I'm about to put an a minus. I'm deleting the C. Uh, I'm deleting C. And I'm putting an a minus, bro. Because he's right in between, just like Huyi. I have to. I don't know. I have to because he's he's not quite as good as AMC and Kernanos. Okay, but he's not as bad as Artemis. Uh, I mean Cupid and like Neath and stuff like that. A minus. And then we're gonna I'm just gonna make that teal, whatever. And then we're gonna adjust this. We're gonna put Huyi here and Rama here. Nah, I'm gonna leave Hachi B plus. I don't think he's as good as these two gods. Yeah, this looks much better to me. This looks much better to me. This is yeah. 
You know, it, it's, such, it's such small things for hunters that can put them above another hunter right now. It's, it's a lot of little things. Okay, no, I like I like this list much better now. The a, I'm glad we put the A minus. Okay. Next up is is Scotty. Woo! <laughs> Trash. Um. Yeah, she doesn't do that much damage anymore. They nerf her damage. She has awful survivability. Uh, can't do shite in the team fights. She's rather close range with her one. I mean, she has a decent long range ability in her ice. Some of her strengths is that she controls decent space with her three. Her dog can be annoying, but she's easy to kill, easy to dive, easy to gank in lane. She has a couple very good matchups. Right? She she can be decent into Kern and AMC. Decent. Not really. Um, but yeah, her damage is lacking. Everything about her is lacking. She needs a buff. I wish I kept C. So uh yeah. Yeah, she's uh she's B. Okay, next up, uh I don't think there's gonna be much uh argument there. Next up is Soul. That's my girl Soul, bro. S tier. Okay. This I mean I feel like this guy was such a sleeper in last year's worlds because no one even like picked her last year's worlds. But uh the thing about Soul is that Gilded Arrow gives her 25 basic attack damage, right? Uh and with her heat fully maxed out, she does about a hundred damage. It's not quite a hundred, it's like ninety at level one, and then it's like ninety-eight at level two. Uh 100 damage per auto and with the heat and the gilded arrow proc her attack speed is like through the roof no one can touch her in the early game she out clears or she doesn't really she so what happens is like the only one that can maybe out clear is heim or izanami but it doesn't even matter because she clears so quickly after them that she went that she can just win the posture in the lane right when, when both creep when both waves die there's a posture in the lane and then it's like which dual lane is stronger can move up Right, and the other guy has to move back. She always wins that posture in the lane, okay? And that allows her to get pressure on the next wave because she's starting to auto attack the creeps for a hundred and auto as they're coming down. And then she no one even touch comes close to fighting her in the laning phase. Um she's really good in team fights as well. Her two controls a lot of space. Her alt is one of the best follow-ups in the game. Can one shot somebody if you can get all the ticks on uh, off on them. She's pretty safe with her three. However, she does have a weakness where she she can be ganked, but in a competitive setting, it's easy to play around the soul uh, or help her out because she's going to have that pressure. Um, but yeah, she's just insane. I thought she was so underrated at Worlds. I was surprised uh, no one really picked her or valued her. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a little, uh, like a little, like uh, antidote, I guess, about soul and, and Worlds. Or an all around, a sole all around matchup, right? At Worlds. So everyone thought that all around was the apex predator in uh, in dual lane because he had he always cleared the buffs the fastest. He cleared red instantly with the mid, and then he cleared purple really fast, and then he can clear the wave really fast with his two. But he wasn't the apex predator, okay? There was a new dog in town, and her name was Soul. Soul clears just as fast in the red, clears the purple faster than the all around, and after the waves are. Oler needs to use his two to clear the wave, and Soul just uses her two as well. So they clear at the same time, and then after they clear, Soul just wins the fight. So she'll get the pressure on the Oleran easily, and then the Oleran has to respect the Soul's two because not only does it do, do damage, it slows him, and so she wins the matchup in the lane. And that's why uh, I picked Soul every every. I was never worried about the Oleran pick because I knew I could out pressure it with the Soul. And win the lane and, and snowball on him. And then all in from behind is not really as good as Soul from ahead. And that, that was the whole like matchup at Worlds. Okay. And so that, that was it. So we kind of baited the all in pick every game as long as the Soul was up. And then when the Soul was not up, I'll pick the all in. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Next up. <clears throat> Next up is. Uller. My boy Uller. He's in such a weird spot right now, bro. I think he's good with Bluestone in the laning phase, but I also think Bluestone in the late game is trash for Uller. 
compared to um, Bumba Spear. However, Soul Eater, I think Soul Eater was buffed, right? You can sell the Bluestone Lake in for the Soul Eater to have 40% pen, like you would with the Bumbas. That way you can have a decent laning phase um, and still do a lot of damage in the late game. So I think going Bluestone Mace or Bluestone Trans first, whatever you want to go, he's good in lane. It sucks because you can't really just go Trans 2 and bide your time. You're just going to get bullied too hard. Um... Because, you know, the best build would, would be to build the Bumba Spear. But you can't really get away with it, especially now there's just so much damage in the game and it's so snowballing in the early game. You need to go the Bluestone build with him. Um, Bluestone Trans. And he can actually be really strong in lane. Uh, he does have weaknesses that you have to land his abilities, okay? That's not easy to do, especially against good players. Uh, he's very skill shot heavy. He's very hit or miss. Uh, his survivability is very low. When you also go the bluestone build, oh, what, one of the major weaknesses of Uller in the past was that he can't do objectives that well, right? You can't really do, can't burn Fire Giant with Uller because he has no attack speed. He uses 3 1 on the Fire Giant and then that's it. You got no more damage really or no more big DPS coming in. But that's what Bumba Spear allowed him to do. Bumba Spear allowed him to do the objectives really fast. So another weakness of going the bluestone build is that his late game objective clear is really bad. And that's kind of the job of the hunter. So it's a very weak uh, late game late game kind of contributor um he's very hit or miss but he still can do well he's not quite as bad as these gods he's he's not quite as good as these a gods so we're just going to leave him b plus he can maybe be an a minus but his survivability is just really bad and his objective clear is really bad so we're going to leave him b plus Okay, what's next? X ball. Ah, that's my boy, X ball. Get back, get down there to the B tier, mister. It is, in my personal opinion, that this god needs a rework. This god needs a rework, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing he's got going for him is, is his bolas, but the problem with his bolas is that it makes you want to go Transcendence, but that build is just weaker compared to going to the meta Crusher Aussie uh, into, you know, Chin's crit build. It's much weaker than that. Uh, he takes a little bit to get online. He's easy to bully in the laning phase. He's also easy to gank. Uh, his ultimate is kind of just whatever now. He's also a very close range god in the team fights. It's very hard for him to get in the team fights and just start autoing. He's kind of Donza in the sense that he needs his team to be pressing W for him to press W, right? He can't really make a play on his own. Uh, he doesn't have the best response to blinks either. He's got no CC. I guess he's got to slow in the poison dart, but you know it's easy to avoid him. Uh, I think I kind of just think he needs a rework in my opinion. His like you can't just add the stun back to the ultimate and be like, oh, he's good now because the stun in the alt is just so broken that it's not good for the game for that that ability to be here because it's just so broken. You know what I mean? Um so yeah, I think he might he might be in line for a rework. I think he might need one. Yeah, he's weak. Weak. He's a weak boy. Uh, is that all the hunters? It is. It is. Yeah, we can we can order we can order we'll order them too. We'll go a step further. We'll go order. This is late game nuts with embrace. It can be, but so is every hunter's. Zeus Bull, are you guys trolling me? <laughs> All right, we'll get, we're going to order this, okay? We're going to order this. It's going to be... I think it's like this. I'm going to put it like this. 
here. It's going to that. That's good. This is already good. This is good. This is good. Well, there's a fly there. I think this is good. Uh, am I missing anything? Any hunters? Okay, we got four magical ADCs and all the hunters. All right, chat. This is the tier list. Take a screenshot. Do whatever you want. That's it. What are your thoughts? What do you guys think? You don't need to agree with me or anything. It's, you know, just my opinion. This is the competitive hunter tier list.